What is up, Only Playbook fans? We are back for another episode here, or should I say I am back, riding solo, doing my best Jason Derulo impression here this morning on Friday. Uh, Shashot and Chauvet are, they were game time decisions, and unfortunately, last minute pregame warmups were ruled out. So I am going to try to hold the fort down and get through this episode where we're going to preview week seven. We're going to recap Thursday Night Football that we finally got a decent primetime football game on Thursday with a lot of points, a lot of fantasy implications. Uh, and obviously, we'll run through a boatload of injuries heading into week seven. So again, I'm your host, Sweetcar. This is the only playbook. Without further ado, let's jump it right into it with Water Cooler Talk. Thursday night football last night kicked us off for week seven. Finally, a good game. The Cardinals and the Saints battled it out in Arizona. Arizona was favored by two and a half points at home over under 44. They nearly hit the over by themselves, winning the game, covering the spread 42 to 34 final. What a shootout. Saints dropped to two and five. Arizona now three and four. Uh, I said last week that Cliff Kingsbury was probably coaching for his job here this week, and the defense bailed him out. Two pick sixes of Andy Dalton in the first half when the score was 14-14, give him the 28-14 lead. Uh, So that was, and that did end up being the difference as after that, the Saints were playing from behind. The Cardinals were able to kind of get on a roll playing with the two touchdown lead. Um, Andy Dalton. Got the start for Jameis Winston, actually had a pretty decent fantasy day, about 27 fantasy points, 361 yards passing, four touchdowns, did have three interceptions. But for fantasy owners who, if you were crazy enough to stream Andy Dalton, you had a solid day. Alvin Kamara, 11 carries, only 49 yards, but did catch seven balls for 56 yards to have a good day. Chris Olave, again, we talked about this, must start every week he plays. Seven catches, 106 yards on 14 targets. 14 targets. They were without Landry and Thomas, but regardless, Chris Olave seems like he has to be starting if he's in your roster, on your roster. Uh, Juwan Johnson, nice uh, flex or nice uh, um, stream of start for the tight end position. If you did deploy him, five catches, 32 yards, but got into the end zone two times. So solid day on their end. Uh, Kyler, uh, again, they won the football game, large part to their defense, large part to running the football well, but Kyler Murray's fantasy year has been disappointing depend, you know, based on where his ADP was only 204 yards through the air. One touchdown did not, uh, throw an interception, but only had seven carries for 30 yards. It was the Eno Benjamin show, 12 carries, 92 yards and a touchdown, four catches, 21 yards. So if you started him, which I did, you were extremely happy with his output. And DeAndre Hopkins is back and he's back with a vengeance here. Vengeance here, 10 care, 10 catches, 103 yards on 14 targets. So um, if you drafted DeAndre Hopkins, you probably reached for him just on the chance that somebody else was going to take him and you stashed him on your bench for six weeks because of the suspension. So there wasn't a world where you're probably not starting Hopkins on Thursday night and he produced for you. So if this is the blueprint for the offense and for Hopkins moving forward, all the people that drafted them are going to reap all of those benefits. Nonetheless, Arizona takes the game 42-34 at home. Cliff Kingsbury lives to see another week, and Kyler Murray somehow gets a win despite still a uneven performance from him at the quarterback position. Ravens signed veteran wide receiver Deshaun Jackson to the practice squad. They are looking for wide receiver help. Rashad Bateman's been hurt. Andrews has been hurt. Both guys did come back to practice, but they are still missing that deep threat that you know Devin DuVernay seems to... You know, they they seem to want to give him that ability, but it just hasn't been consistent. So having a guy like Deshaun Jackson who can stretch the field, at least keep the defenses honest, it's going to bode well for the running game, which has been lacking, and for all the underneath stuff for Andrews, who has not been lacking, but that should just help him that much more and solidify him as, you know, tight end two in fantasy football right behind Travis Kelsey. But uh, Deshaun Jackson on the practice squad, we'll see if he gets elevated at game time to actually play. But Bateman is back, and uh, Kelsey, I'm sorry, Andrews, Andrews is back after uh, missing a couple of practices due to injury. So uh, we'll see if he actually gets some run, but uh, a really exciting player that is known to be a deep threat. Jets wide receiver Elijah Moore frustrated with only getting one target last week against Green Bay has requested a trade, but the team come out, came out and said there's no intentions to trade him. He is a young receiver, still playing on a rookie scale contract, a lot of upside. I know teams would be chomping at the bit to get him that desperately need receivers like the Green Bay Packers. Um, So, you know, there's definitely a market for a young up and coming receiver like Elijah Moore, and he probably feels that in a Zach Wilson led offense, it's not going to 
pose the best options for him as the receiver because they run the ball a lot. They play good defense and Zach Wilson just plays complimentary football. So he did request a trade. They said they don't want to trade him. We know how that's turned out in the past with players requesting trades and teams coming out and then immediately the next day shipping him. So uh, we'll see, and we'll keep an eye out for that. If he gets into a uh, nice situation, again, like the green Bay Packers or another team that maybe needs a receiver that has a good quarterback and a good offense, uh, he could automatically catapult himself into starting territory. Big trade, big, big trade, guys. CMC Christian McCaffrey has officially been traded to the San Francisco 49ers for a 2023 second, third, fourth round pick and a 2024 fourth round pick. A haul, in my opinion, for a running back that's aging. Running back's just a complimentary uh, position now in a position that is not valued where it once was. And he is injury prone. I mean, you know, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. He's healthy this year. He's been producing really, really well for a Panthers offense that's been abysmal. So he now gets to go to the Bay Area, back to his hometown, play for a 49ers team and a coach that is an offensive mastermind. Uh, he is expected to play this week against the Chiefs, but they did mention that he is only going to be in red zone and end zone packages till he learns the scope of this offense. But it's CMC. You can probably slot him in anywhere. He could be a slot receiver. He can come in for gadget plays till he learns the, um, I guess, the overall, the entirety of the offensive playbook. But he is still a start if you have CMC and you're probably happy that he isn't more in a more advantageous situation. Now, the downside to that is the 49ers do have a lot of other offensive weapons. They still have good running backs in Jeff Wilson. Tevin Coleman's been a nice compliment. Obviously, with CMC, he's going to be the focal point, but you still have guys like Debo Samuel, Brandon Ayuk, George Kittle. So there are mouths to feed. So it is something that's worth monitoring. It's not like Jimmy G is, you know, the air it out type quarterback that's going to get everybody involved. It's going to be kind of a week to week thing where, you know, some games, one guy may pop off like I did last week, but I still expect CMC to have that floor and be consistent. And again, it's a great situation for him playing with a mastermind and Kyle Shanahan, who he does have some history with while he was a child and Shanahan's dad, Mike Shanahan was coaching the Broncos. CMC's dad Ed McCaffrey was a wide receiver and believe it or not, Kyle Shanahan used to babysit CMC. So there is some, um, I guess, rapport that's already been built there. So we'll see kind of how that shakes out, but that is a huge, huge trade. Panthers getting a boatload of picks, which I think it's a win-win for both sides. Panthers get to dive into that full rebuild and uh, the 49ers get an absolute stud in CMC. That's it. Let's jump into injuries real quick. I'll run through these quickly. Um, again, these are updated based on what's come out today and what's come out yesterday, Thursday. So follow the only playbook at Twitter at only playbook for the latest injury updates and notifications on. We'll be tweeting out there heading into Sunday prior to kickoff, but Ravens tight end Mark Andrews did return to practice on Friday. JK Dobbins missed his third straight day. So the outlook for the running back position is not great. Kenyon Drake, maybe a nice spot start there, even though again, I want no part of that backfield with Hill and Edwards returning, but Dobbins owners, you're not happy. This is not what you expected when you, when you drafted him, but um, you know, Mark Andrews is a full go. And I think Rashad Bateman's back as well. So if he plays uh, should be deployable and startable. Colts running back Jonathan Taylor is back practice for third straight day as did Naheem Hines backup. So Deion Jackson may be back to his um, backup bench role. Unfortunately, even though he had a really nice spot start last week, Taylor should slide right in. And I think owners that drafted him are still looking for him to have the season that they expected from him. And hopefully this week is the stepping stone to build into a better season than what the first five, six weeks have showed. Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott is all systems go Sunday against Detroit. Uh, he's not going to be wearing anything protective on his hand or anything like that. So it seems like he is back to 100%. And it is such an intriguing matchup against Detroit. It's Lions defense that's, I think, 31st against the pass. So that is a situation where you're probably going to start him in a week where there are bit, there are a ton of bye weeks. Steelers tight end Pat Fryermuth, quarterback Kenny Pickett, both clear concussion protocol. So they should be a go for Sunday. You're looking at Fryermuth, who has been a nice piece when Trubisky was there. We'll see if the situation is the same with Kenny Pickett, but Kenny Pickett is back and he is expected to start with Trubisky back in the backup role. Uh, I just mentioned Elijah Moore. He had demanded a trade. He's not hurt, but it looks like he, Robert Sala came out and said he is not going to play on Sunday. So I don't know if that's because of the disagreement, him wanting to get traded, et cetera, but he is out. So that is something to monitor if you were desperate in starting Elijah Moore, which you absolutely should not be in that Jets offense. Giants running back Saquon limited Thursday. He should still play. He's still kind of limited because they're monitoring the shoulder injury, but I think it's just more so being safe than sorry, but I expect him to be out there. Bengals wide receivers, Jamar Chase and T Higgins limited practice on Thursday. I expect both those guys to be out there on Sunday. Dolphins wide receiver, Jalen Waddle also limited on Thursday. He is more of a game time decision, although I do also expect him to play, but that is something that would be warranting of more monitoring heading into Sunday at kickoff. 
Seahawks wide receiver Tyler Lockett did not practice on Thursday. So that is something that does not bode well. We need to see him log at least somewhat of a limited uh, practice on Friday today or Saturday if they have anything um, going on that day. But otherwise, the outlook's not great for Lockett to play on Sunday. Broncos quarterback Russell Wilson limited practice with hamstring injury. He does expect to play. Russ is notorious for playing through his injuries uh, to the demise of his own team at times, but uh, he was limited with that hamstring. Hamstrings are lingering. And with Russ supposed to be a mobile quarterback, if the hamstring does limit him from being mobile, we've seen his inability to find wide open receivers in front of him in the pocket. So he is a guy that, you know, I have in my fantasy team and I am not starting him. I'm starting two over him right now. There's just no world where you're starting Russ with confidence. So look for options elsewhere. Raiders side in Darren Waller did not practice Wednesday or Thursday. The dude just cannot get healthy. He's probably not going to play. So you're going to need to look at other options. Lions running back DeAndre Swift limited practice Wednesday and Thursday. So he is expected to play, but again, it's, it's Swift. So it, it is going to be a game time decision. You still want to monitor that Jamal Williams will get the carries. If he's not playing, even if he's limited, Williams should have a decent amount of action because they're going to ease Swift in. And Williams seems to get a lot of the goal line situation carries. Again, like I mentioned, any other injuries that will come out between now and kickoff on Sunday, follow us at Twitter at only playbook, turn your notifications on to get the latest injury updates. That's it for water cooler talk. I'm going to jump right into the rundown. Four teams on buys this week, Bills, Vikings, Rams, and Eagles. A lot of fantasy players, a lot of startable players, a lot of you know top five, top 10 players on those teams. So uh, big spot for bye week fill-in. So make sure you do your job, do your research, and plug in players that have the upside necessary to win your matchups. A lot of teams, a lot of players treat bye weeks as automatic losses, but in fantasy, nothing is given. You could have the best team and you could lose. You could have the worst team and you could win. So treat every week as a winnable week. Don't start a player that's destined on a buy that's going to get zero points just just because you can't drop anybody. You need to make a trade. You need to create some roster room. Uh, it's just about the maneuverability. First game on the board on Sunday, we have the Falcons traveling to Cincinnati to take on the Bengals. Bengals here at home favored by six and a half points over under sitting at 47 and a half. Both teams come into this matchup at three and three records. The Bengals, the biggest thing with the Bengals on their side is they've shifted to a more pass heavy offense the last two or three weeks. Uh, they started the season being a big run heavy offense, giving Joe Mixon the carries, but their run offense has not been efficient. And with Higgins getting healthier with Jamar Chase there, they have the weapons on the receiving core to get back into the pass heavy offense. And it's, it's boded well for them the last couple of weeks. So I think that's going to be the biggest shift that we want to watch as fantasy owners. You're going to deploy chase. You're going to deploy Higgins when he's healthy. Uh, and even in spot starts, Tyler Boyd against a high flying offense on the other side, where you're expecting a ton of scoring and back and forth. He's not a terrible option as well. Um, obviously the Falcons have been a pleasant surprise at three and three early on, but there isn't a ton of upside on starting anybody on that offense right right now, Mariota, if you're desperate, um, but the running back situation, Algier and Huntley are splitting right down the middle. So until Patterson's back, uh, there's really not a guy you want to start there. Unless you're desperate, you're going to hope you start the right guy and he rumbles into the end zone. Uh, Kyle Pitts has been absolutely terrible. So uh, if you can find another option, I know Pitts owners are hard pressed on starting him and kind of going to their grave with Kyle Pitts, but he's just been bad. And Drake London, I mean, he sees target share, but he's not getting as many catches because of that offense, because of Marcus Mariota. He's not a pass first quarterback. So it's it's going to be tough for London to, even though he has great matchups, his schedule, strength of schedule as a receiver is very, very favorable. Um, heading into the latter part of the season, he's going to have to have more consistent quarterback play to see the volume and the production to uh, warrant starting him in fantasy. So uh, those are the guys that I'm looking to get started. Obviously on the Bengals side, you're starting everybody. Burrow, Mixon, Chase, Higgins. I think Hayden Hurst is a nice spot here as well. Uh, I don't know if his production was more because Higgins has been uh, hobbled the last couple of weeks, but it is, again, the tight end world is such a crapshoot that I don't mind Hayden Hurst in this spot start. Again, on the Falcons side, I mean, if you're desperate, Mariota, but nobody else really, to me, warrants starting in this matchup against the Bengals. Let's kick it to Dallas, where the Cowboys are hosting the Lions this week at home. Seven-point favorites over under sitting at 49. Detroit comes into this matchup one and four. Dallas is four and two in that nice start. Dak Prescott's the storyline here. He is 100% full go. He should be back. Gets a really nice matchup to start the season for him. Uh, you're going to start him. You're probably going to start him with full confidence because, again, you have 
quarterbacks like Josh Allen, you have Jalen Hurts on a buy, Kirk Cousins and Matt Stafford. If you were, you know, thinking about streaming those guys, those guys are also on a buy. So I think Dak Prescott slots in really nicely here for a good start. Uh, you're probably going to start Zeke. You're going to start Pollard. You may even, I mean, you're probably going to start everybody on the Cowboys offense just because this line's defense is so porous, right? CD Gallup Schultz, if he's healthy, has been really, really nice with Dak. So hopefully they can get that report back. Schultz, I'm a little bit more hesitant on just because we need to see the nature of how healthy he is. If he is fully healthy, I think Dak is going to give him his targets. So the receiving core, CD Gallup Schultz, you're looking at guys where, you know, you could wait a week to see where Dak's really going to go with the football, but it is bye weeks. Again, you're desperate. I don't mind starting any of those guys, but Zeke and Pollard, you should start. Dak, you should absolutely start. Lion side, if Swift is healthy, you're going to play him. Williams may even still be a nice spot start just because, again, he gets the red zone carries, and if they have to limit Swift, it's going to go to Williams. Amonri St. Brown has proved that when he's healthy, he is a start, so you absolutely put him in your lineup, even though it's a tough matchup against the Cowboys defense. Hawkinson, hit or miss, boomer bust. It's a tough matchup. If I'm you, I'm looking at alternate options at the tight end position. Cowboys defense might be a nice start here, but the Lions offense was rolling early on when everybody was healthy, but the Cowboys pass rush may be too much. It's going to be a battle of the Cowboys pass rush against the Lions uh, protection on the passing offense. So their offensive line has been fantastic. Cowboys pass rush has been fantastic. Which side's going to get the better end of the stick against the opposing team? That's going to be what we're watching out for in this matchup. Next game on the board takes us to Colts who are traveling to Tennessee to take on the Titans. This team is already, these teams have already faced off in week four earlier this year. They played in Indianapolis where the Titans won the game 24 to 17. Indy comes into this game three, two and one Tennessee is three and two. Jonathan Taylor looks like he is going to be back and fully healthy. So uh, fantasy owners deploy him. You're hoping that he gets a, you know, nice fantasy day as this should be a running back duel with Jonathan Taylor and Derrick Henry, who already had 114 yards and a touchdown in week four when these two teams faced off. So I'm expecting big games from both of those guys on the Colts side. You're probably going to start Michael Pittman jr. Because he's getting a ton of volume. Uh, Alec Pierce is a nice spot start in bye weeks just because he plays almost every single snap on offense. So Matt Ryan's been nice the last week. He had his best game of the season. So if you're desperate in streaming options, he is not a bad streaming option this week coming off again, the best game of the season. And another guy to highlight Moali Cox, Moali Cox is hit or miss, but the last time these two teams face off, he had six catches, 85 yards, and two touchdowns. So uh, again, tight ends, crap shoots. If you're banking on upside, if you're playing against a team that is projected to score a shit ton of points and they have all their guys playing and you have you know a decimation of injuries or a bye week situation, you're going to be looking for home run hitters. You're not going to be looking for consistent forces to get you six to eight points. Moali Cox could find the end zone here and get you double digits. Uh, Tannehill on the Titans side could be a streamable option. Again, if you're desperate at the quarterback situation, no other pass catchers, in my opinion, on their team is worth starting. Derrick Henry is an obvious start. Packers travel to Washington to take on the commanders here. Green Bay favored by four and a half points over under 41 and a half. Green Bay comes into this game disappointing three and three overall record in the season so far. The commanders are two and four. There is no Carson Wentz this week. So Taylor Heineke will get the start. Uh, the thing to know with Taylor Heineke, when he did start last year, he loved Terry McLaurin, who saw 25% target share with him at the quarterback position. They didn't have Curtis Samuel last year, and he is kind of the guy that's getting the gadget plays, the in underneath stuff. D Jahan Dotson is hurt, and it looks like he's not going to play. So TMC may get a nice spot start here against Green Bay. Um, I'm still worried about Brian Robinson as their running back, since they have three running backs in Gibson and McKissick, and both those guys are way better pass catchers than Robinson is, at least you know what we've seen, right? We haven't seen Robinson get deployed as a pass catcher much at all. He is truly only a two down back. So you're worried with the upside potential being capped because he does not catch passes on third down. So that, you know, th that is not an ideal matchup against green Bay anyways, but again, it's bye weeks. If you're desperate, I don't hate starting him just because he's a starting running back, but just know your upside's probably limited unless he finds the end zone like he did last week. Green Bay side commander's defense is abysmal. So Aaron Rodgers might be a good start this week, even though he hasn't been a great start all year. Um, Jones and Dylan, you're probably deploying them against a bad running defense. And I'm still comfortable starting Romeo Dobbs and Alan Lazard. I think again, the ball is going to have to go somewhere. Randall Cobb is now hurt. So I think those are the two best options that they have. Keep an eye out on Bob Tunyon, who did, uh, you know, have 10 catches for 90 yards on 12 targets last week. So I know they've, him and Rodgers have had some good report last season, but he's been hurt. So if this is kind of the outlook moving forward, because the wide receivers aren't, you know, the top cream of the crop wide receivers in the Adams, the Jordy Nelsons that he's had in the past, Bob Tunyon may be a, a sneaky, sneaky play. Next game on the board, Tampa Bay is traveling to Carolina to take on the Panthers. Tampa Bay on the road, favored by 13 points over under 39 and a half. 
The Bucs are three and three this year. Carolina is one and five. The story for Carolina, no more CMC. He has officially been traded. So you're probably in a situation where Foreman and Chuba Hubbard are going to split the carries. But the upside to me is still with Foreman, who should be more of a pass catching back anyways. But again, the efficiency from a running game standpoint with no CMC should not be there. And I don't think it will be there. So if you're looking for, you know, 13 carries and 27 yards or something like that, uh, it's not going to be a pretty day unless one of those running backs finds the end zone. So look at options elsewhere. PJ Walker is starting. So that means he's not startable. That means none of the receivers are startable. So on the Panther side, honestly, guys do not start anybody unless you're desperate with Foreman and Chuba Herbert. There is nobody else that's worth a start. Bucks D is great play here. I mean, they might be one of the best defensive streaming options this week. You're starting Tom Brady because of the matchup, uh, even though the Panthers defense is, is probably the only good thing about that team. Tom Brady, Leonard Fournette, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, all startable. Kate Otten, streamable tight end option, although I think there are better options elsewhere because you're going to have to most likely bank on a touchdown there. But again, this is a tough place for Carolina. They're in a full rebuild at home. They have a backup quarterback who's an ex-XFL quarterback, and they have no CMC who is their entire offense. So that's why the line is what it is, even though Tampa Bay is on the road and they haven't been playing their best football. But I still expect them to get the job done, and the Panthers should shift into more of a rebuild situation. Next game on the board, we have the New York Giants 5-1, and one, continuing to not get any respect from Vegas. This is the fishiest line of the week. They're at Jacksonville. Jags are 2-4. and four, Giants are 5-1. and one, Yet the Jags at home are favored by three points over under sitting at 43. I mean, guys, anytime I see something like this, it just screams Vegas knows something that we don't know because this line makes no sense. The Jags should not be favored. The Jags are awful. The Giants have been a surprise and their defense is really, really good. We saw how bad the Jags offense was against the Houston Texans defense. So why are we expecting anything different against this Giants defense? Uh, Daniel Jones likes to run the ball with his legs. So that makes him somewhat of a viable streaming option, even though there are better options in my opinion out there. Saquon limited in practice with the shoulder injury, but he's going to play probably. So he is the obvious must start. Wanda Robinson becomes an intriguing receiver because they have nobody else. Tony and Galladay probably won't play. Slayton is the nice, you know, maybe the number one, but I also think his talent is capped in terms of upside. So Wanda Robinson becomes an intriguing option here. You may start him just risking the fact that you don't have anybody else to go with. He's not the worst start of the world, but I want to see a little bit more volume and a little bit more snap count from Wandell before I am fully confident in starting him, but I still don't hate him in a PPR or half point PPR format. Jag side, I'm not starting Trevor Lawrence. Uh, running back situation is a nightmare right now with ETN starting to garner more of the workload than J uh, James Robinson, even though James Robinson had a great first three weeks of the season. So if you're starting any one of those guys, probably ETN because of his pass catching abilities. And I expect the Giants to be up. Uh, and if not up, you know, the Jags are going to have to run, throw the football a little bit more. I think the Giants running defense is going to stuff J-Rob. So ETN might get the pass catches and he may be a viable, you know, RB2 or flex spot this week. Jags offense. I mean, Christian Kirk, great start to the season. He's tapered off. Zay Jones actually leads that team in targets. So if you're desperate, either one of those guys, but the Giants defense has been good. The only pass catcher I'd be okay starting is probably their tight end, Evan Ingram, who's, you know, he's been a, a nice surprise, even though I hate him. He doesn't have great hands, but if he's getting the volume and with the tight end position, again, being such a crapshoot, he's not the worst option in the world there. But pass catchers, you know, Kirk and Zay Jones, you really have to be desperate to be starting those guys, um, which some teams, because the decimation of injuries and bye weeks may be. So uh, not the worst starts in the world, but Giants are a good defense. They're five and one. I don't understand this line. The, 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 I guess the gambler in me is saying, take the Jags minus three, because there's a reason the line is what it is. And Vegas knows something, but the smart play is the better team getting three points on the road. So we'll see crapshoot betting has been this year. I'm probably going to lay off. Browns traveled up the Baltimore Ravens in a divisional matchup. Ravens at home favored by six and a half points over under 45 and a half. Browns are two and four. Ravens are three and three and leading the division playing 500 football. So this is a very, very tight division uh, still early in the season. So it's anybody's division. I mean, the Ravens have blown double digit leads in the second half in all three of their losses last or this year. Last year, these two teams faced off and the Browns intercepted Lamar four times, but still lost the game 16 to 10. So um, that offense is limited. Their defense has not been the same this year at all. So so uh, you're probably comfortable with Lamar. Um, if I'm you, I'm not starting any of their running backs, but if you're desperate, Kenyon Drake seems like the best option right now. Uh, Rashad Bateman's back. So you're probably deploying him. Mark Andrews is an obvious start on the Brown side. Nick Chubb, obvious Kareem Hunt in a nice flex spot, you know, maybe used heavily on the pass catching side. If the Browns go down. Amari Cooper and Njoku, you know, Njoku has been consistent. So I'm very comfortable starting him. Cooper, boomer bust. Um, 
this defense of the Ravens has not been ideal. So you, you may be okay starting him, but just don't be surprised if you see him have a two catch 24 yard game. The Jets at the Broncos next game on the board. Jets on the road favored by one over under 38 points. Both teams surprising to start the season, but for opposite reasons. Jets four and two, Denver two and four. This Jets defense is the real deal and another amazing spot start if you're streaming a defense. Jets defense, go out and pick them up. They were only 2% rostered. Uh, as of like Tuesday, I'm sure they've gotten picked up big time, but this is a great spot start. Broncos offense dead last in scoring, and Russ is dealing with that injury, which again, he plays through in the past, but he does it at his team's demise. You saw the injury last year with the mallet finger when he was playing on the Seattle Seahawks, and their offense, you know, suffered the consequences of that. So um, I think it is a good spot start for the Jets defense. Broncos running back situation incredibly dicey. Melvin Gordon gets benched last week, and Hackett comes out and says he's starting this week, but who do they have as their backup guys? The vulture king of Latavius Murray. So um, he immediately caps Melvin Gordon's upside because Latavius is probably going to get a lot of the goal line work. So unless Gordon has a high volume, highly efficient running day, he's probably not going to get into the end zone because Latavius Murray will take those uh, touches. So I don't like Melvin Gordon unless you're desperate. Latavius Murray might be a better option if you're desperate just because you're banking on a touchdown there. But with how bad the offense has been, neither guy seems like a great start. I'm not starting any of their pass catchers, Sutton, Judy, until we see more consistent play from Russ. I mean, none of those guys deserve to get started. If you're desperate and you're starting him, you're just going to be banking on getting lucky. But there's nothing that tells me that either of those guys is worth starting. On the Jets side, not the best matchup with the Broncos having a solid defense, but it's impossible not to start Brees Hall after how good he's been. So you're probably going to start him, and he's the only guy in the offense I feel comfortable starting. And again, like I mentioned, Jets defense, probably the best uh, fantasy option in this entire game. So that's Jets Broncos for you. The Houston Texans travel to Vegas to take on the Raiders. Raiders favored by seven points at home over under sitting at 45 and a half. Houston won three and one this year. Vegas one and four. Uh, interesting matchup here on the Houston Texans side. Damian Pierce has been amazing. He's a must start now. He's first among rookies in rushing yards, 18 broken tackles in five games, guys. That leads the entire NFL. So this guy is the real deal. I traded him away, got, you know, Jalen Hurts, Gabe Davis back and traded away him, Mike Williams and uh, Chris Godwin. So I think it was a win-win trade for both me and the guy I traded to. But if you have Damian Pierce, you are absolutely starting him because he has been phenomenal. Josh Jacobs, another guy I despise because how bad he was for me last year, but he's having one of his best years yet, maybe his best. So he is an auto start this week. Uh, the matchup to look out for here is Devontae Adams against, you know, Texans rookie cornerback, Derek Stingley, who's been really, really good this year. Adams, they move around a lot. So I don't know if Stingley is going to shadow him. And Devontae Adams is a guy that is matchup proof, in my opinion. The only problem with Devontae Adams is his quarterback. So uh, outside of Derek Carr, Devontae Adams is a must start every week, but it is an intriguing matchup to watch against Derek Stingley. Uh, should be a game that, you know, warrants having decent fantasy outputs from the players you're starting, but it's the Texans and it's the Raiders. And you know how I feel about the Raiders. So that will be something I'm watching out for. The Seattle Seahawks travel to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. Chargers at home favored by five points over under sitting at 50. Seattle comes into this game three and three. Chargers are four and two. Justin Herbert, finally, no injury designation on the rib injury. So he is a hundred percent full go and it's a best matchup for him to be able to be full go. Seattle's defense is absolutely putrid. So Herbert expecting to have a huge day. Austin Eckler, you're deploying. Mike Williams, you're deploying with confidence. They talked to Keenan Allen. It looks like he wants to rest his hamstring one more week because in the past he's come back not fully healthy and re-aggravated it. So you're looking at that. You're looking at Joshua Palmer, who's also hurt. So DeAndre Carter might be a nice, you know, solid um, stream option for you. He's going to garner targets. He is a good volume guy. So if you're in a PPR half point PPR format, I don't hate Deandre Carter, Gerald Everett. You're probably starting with confidence based on the matchup and the fact that tight ends are, uh, you know, a dime a dozen essentially Seattle, Seattle side, Geno Smith has been a nice option and the chargers defense is not ideal. So Geno, you're starting Kenneth Walker, the third, another rookie running back. That's been phenomenal. So you're deploying him with confidence and with Lockett hobbled and the matchup DK Metcalf becomes a nice start as well. So all three of those guys you're deploying should be a nice fantasy day should be a ton of points that I'm expecting with two bad defenses and offenses that can move the football. The Kansas City Chiefs are traveling to San Francisco to take on the 49ers. Kansas City on the road favored by two over under 49. Chiefs come into this game four and two. San Francisco is three and three. And I think the story here is San Francisco now has a new weapon, CMC. He is going to be limited because of not knowing the entirety of the playbook, but they've already come out and said they're going to use him in goal line and red zone packages. So that does not bode well for fantasy owners of guys like Jeff Wilson, Debo Samuel, even George Kittle, right? Because you're looking at CMC, who has been the focal point of every you know offense, albeit it's all Carolina, uh, that he's been a part of. 
And so you're expecting him to take away some of the production from those other guys. So uh, it is worrisome. I think Jimmy G has a nice option here to be a spot start because Kansas City shouldn't have problems scoring the football, moving the football. So the 49ers may play from behind. I think it's all going to be contingent upon how healthy this 49ers defense is going to be coming in. Uh, Bosa and Jimmy Ward were back at practice, but no Eric Armstead still. So uh, they need Nick Bosa bad bad, bad, bad. And Jimmy Ward on the back end, they absolutely need as well. So uh, it's going to be remain to be seen what defense gets put out there on Sunday. That's going to dictate the way this game goes, but CMC, even though he is going to be limited, you're going to start him with the upside. Um, I think you're not, I, I don't think you're starting Jeff Wilson um, because I think game script and having CMC now warrants that his touches are going to be limited. Debo, you're probably still starting and Kittle and Ayuk are intriguing just because they're coming off amazing performances last week. So it's hard not to start them based on last week and based on the fact that the Chiefs should be up and the 49ers should need to throw the football. So uh, I think all those guys are startable, but, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt on the Chiefs side. Patty, obviously, CEH is a tough matchup against his 49ers defense, and he just hasn't warranted an auto start with McKinnon playing well. They use Pacheco from time to time, and they love the end arounds with Hardman, the key sneaks with Kelsey. So it just doesn't bode well for CEH owners. Kelsey, obvious start. Juju coming off a really, really good game, but the target target share is still not there for any Kansas city wide receiver to warrant an auto start. And they're just having trouble beating man to man coverage. I think that's what a lot of defenses are finding out that these chiefs receivers cannot get separation. So I'm not starting any chiefs receiver with any confidence. I'm probably not starting any of them at all. So you're looking at Patty and Kelsey are the only startable options on the Chiefs side. Take us to Sunday night football where the Steelers are traveling to Miami to take on the Dolphins at home. Dolphins favored by seven points over under sitting at 45 and a half. Pittsburgh come in, comes into this game two and four. Miami is three and three. Kenny Pickett and Tua Tagovailoa, both quarterbacks that were in concussion protocol, have cleared and are expected to play. So they're, both teams are finally getting their number one quarterback. So the matchup here that I'm watching out for is the Miami wide receivers against Pittsburgh's pasty. Pittsburgh's pass defense has allowed a hundred yard receiver in four games this year. Uh, the Steelers defense desperately needs to get healthy. They need Mika Fitzpatrick who practiced. They need him back. They need to kill Weatherspoon. They need Cam Sutton and they need Levi Walls. All those guys have to play. They have to be in full force, which they're not going to be because TJ Watt's probably not going to play, but outside of Watt, they need every other defensive player that's going to make an impact to play because this is going to be a tough matchup with the Dolphins wide receivers. And, you know, Brian Flores returning at as a Steelers coach now back to Miami, uh, revenge game, maybe not, probably not, but you know, that is some type of storyline that is something that's worth watching out for on the Steelers side. I mean, Najee Harris owners are not happy with what he's done, but it's hard not to start him. You're probably going to deploy him. Deontay Johnson, probably going to get deployed just based on target share and, um, the fact that the Steelers are probably going to be down in this football game, but it's not a sexy matchup. Uh, I mean, if you're desperate, Chase Claypool had a really, really nice game, but that's what Claypool has been. He's a boomer bust guy with a lot more busts than boom. So, you know, the law of averages say if he had a boom game last week, he's probably gonna have a bust game this week. But if the Dolphins offense gets going early and the Steelers are down, volume will be the name of the game. Then all of the pass catchers may have decent days just because they're going to be down and needing to throw the football. Uh, Pat Fryermuth is also back. So that could be an option there on, at the tight end position, but it, it, it's tough. It's tough on the Pittsburgh side. And I think on the Miami side, Tua is a great stream option. You're probably starting him. If he's fully healthy, it's a great matchup. And you saw what he did with those receivers the first three weeks when he was healthy, Raheem Mostert, going to be a start. Tyreek Hill, obvious. Jalen Waddle, if healthy, obvious. Mike Gusecki had a great game last week, but he is touchdown dependent and the game script has to be in his favor, which I don't think this game necessarily will. So I know they are shopping Mike Gusecki because he is an attractive tight end that a lot of teams would love, love, love to have as a weapon. But for this team and what they do, he just does not fit the scheme the best. So he is, I think there are better tight end options that are going to garner more volume. Let's end the rundown with Monday Night Football. The Chicago Bears are traveling to New England to take on the Patriots. Patriots at home favored by seven and a half points over under sitting at 40. Chicago is two and four to start the season. New England three and three. Patriots defense to me, another must start of the week. This Pats defense going against Justin Fields and this putrid, putrid offense. They should have an amazing, amazing game. Mac Jones slated to return, although I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Bailey Zappi has held his own. 2-0 and as a starter last week at 300 passing yards and two touchdowns against the Browns. But whichever quarterback's at the helm, it's not going to matter because the Bears secondary is pretty good. But you know what's not good is the Bears run defense. They're at the they're the bottom of the barrel. And Damian Harris is healthy. Ramondre Stevenson has been a juggernaut. But being that Damian Harris is healthy and he has been RB1, this hurts Ramondre Stevenson owners for the long haul. But this is a matchup where I'm comfortable deploying Harris and Stevenson. This could be a game where both guys have 
80 plus yards and a touchdown. So Bears uh, run defense is absolutely abysmal. Their pass defense is great. So Belichick loves to scheme against defenses and situations. And I think this could be a run, run, run uh, game for the Patriots. Bears mentioned, uh, Ibra Flus came out and said that they are going to go with the hot hand at the running back position. But in my opinion, that's still going to be Montgomery until it's not. So it's not an ideal matchup against the Patriots defense, but you're still probably starting David Montgomery. I'd hold off on starting Khalil Herbert, even if he becomes a hot hand or hot man this game. It's just it's just a tough matchup to predict. But Monty, you feel safer starting. Nobody else on the Bears offense, in my opinion, you're starting Justin Fields. Not a good start, not a good matchup. His legs do help his fantasy perspective, but there are plenty of other streamable options that are not going to make you be forced to start a guy like Justin Fields. That is it for the rundown guys. That is the slate of games. I don't have a moneymaker this week. We are going to lay off and just watch and relax. So that is going to be the episode. Uh, again, had to hold down the fork because my comrades were busy, but uh, it is what it is. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you're watching and watching on YouTube, listen to us on any of the podcast platforms, give our social medias a follow uh, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Twitter is at only playbook, Instagram and TikTok at the only playbook. Turn your notifications on on Twitter for any last minute injuries. Uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Hope your fantasy team wins a football game. Uh, hope my fantasy team does not go 0 7 and I don't have to start next week by talking about how they're 0 7. Again, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Have a great day.